Here's a really short video. I'm trying to keep it under five minutes. It's a 3G vertical uphill, eighth inch thick butt joint, full penetration, crystal clear arc shots. Let's do it. Sometimes the biggest challenge on a joint like this is getting comfortable, finding a place to prop. You can see there's just not much of a place to prop here. So I'm propping with one of my TIG fingers. That's gonna do two things for me. It's gonna protect my fingers from heat. It's also gonna help me just kind of scoot up the joint and glide up nice and smooth like that. I'm using a back step sequence on this joint because I want to show how to tie into a previous weld smoothly, how to blend it in. I'm coming up on the end tack here, so I've got to be really careful to start tapering my amperage so that I don't blow that end away. Here's a quick slide on the settings that I used. They're just a guideline. What I think is as important or more important on getting full penetration, full smooth penetration, is filing that edge. A sheared edge looks rough like this. There's lots of oxides on that thing. It's best to smooth them down using a nice clean file. In fact, I have seen it to where when I use the flap disc, especially one that's not designed for aluminum, it smears the oxides and prevents penetration, whereas a file, if it's a good clean file, can work a lot better. All right, well, let's get back to welding. Let's take a look at that puddle now and talk about that a little bit. You want to watch that puddle sink a little bit in between dabs. That'll tell you you're getting full penetration. Coming up on that previous weld here, I'm going to slow down, dab a little less filler, keep moving as I add less and less filler, tapering amperage. From the back side, that looks something like this. I want to keep the amperage going until I get about right here, add less filler, start tapering amperage. As I taper off the amperage, I kind of move the arc around and swirl to avoid a crater crack. We got a little bit more to weld, so let's take another close-up look at that arc shot and try to look at that puddle. That number five cup really confines the cleaning action zone outside the toes of that weld and actually kind of takes that energy and pushes it into the puddle and helps with penetration on a full penetration joint like this. My arc length is about the diameter of the electrode. And again, you can kind of see me swirl the arc around as I taper amperage to avoid leaving that crater crack. Hey, before you go, here's a quick little clip showing how useful a TIG finger can be. This is my good friend Brad Goodman welding on one of his aluminum dog feeders. This is 090 thickness, 5052 aluminum. He's using the pulsing with the pedal technique to punch a full penetration weld on these outside corners. Brad's using a TIG finger to glide along right next to that weld to hold his hand steady so he can make a full run without stopping. Trying to finish a bead when your knuckles are screaming, not much fun. If you find it hard to find a place to prop sometimes, right next to that weld where it's nice and hot, a TIG finger in your pocket is like having a prop in your pocket. Sometimes you might be welding on preheated parts and want to slip two fingers in the TIG finger. A TIG finger XL is awesome for that. A TIG finger will give you lots of options on where to prop when there is no prop. Aluminum is something that we all know heats up really quickly, and it's hard to find a place to prop on that. A TIG finger will let you glide along smoothly and will keep your fingers cool. My store is at weldmonger.com. That is how I support these videos, and I appreciate your support. So I went to the doctor the other day and he says, hey, you need to drink a lot of water to keep from getting stiff in the joints. And I said, doc, not all the joints serve water.